Hello! In this video, I show you how to set up the clients in our system for easy remote access, Cinema Remote Connect. The prerequisite for this is that the Cinema Remote Connect server has already been set up. I already explained how to do this in another video. In order to smoothly set up the clients, for example devices and users, it is recommended to create a group concept before. Thereby, user and device groups and their communication relationships, for example the access rights to each other, are defined. In the Cinema Remote Connect server, you can create as many groups as you like. Users or devices are then assigned to these groups. With the help of a smart group concept, a new user is automatically given all access rights to which he is entitled. You can extend the group concept as you like. I create the group concept in the Cinema Remote Connect server. I log on to the server and open the menu item Participant Groups. I create a new group with the name User and save it. Then I create another group for the end devices and call it Devices. Now I can assign the group User access rights to the group Devices. To do this, I open Actions Communication Relations of the User group and select the Devices group. Under Communication Relations, I can check the settings. To do this, I click on Communication Relations and see that our users are allowed to access the devices. If you want to access machines that have identical IP addresses and subnets, for example serial machines, you must use the NAT functionality of the Cinema Remote Connect server. Under Remote Connections – Address Spaces, I activate the checkbox Network Address Space. Please check with your IT administrator in advance whether this address space is available. If the pre-selected address space is already in use, you can adjust the addresses as you like. Now I can start to create the clients. I start with a device. I want to integrate the mobile wireless router Scalens M876-4 for my control cabinet and put it into operation. A Cinema RC key plug is already plugged in the router. The plug unlocks the license for Cinema Remote Connect and also stores the configuration. If the router needs to be replaced, the plug is simply plugged into the replacement device and the configuration is automatically applied. The remote maintenance connection should only be established when required. The connection is activated by a key switch on the control cabinet. The active VPN connection is indicated by a warning lamp. Under Remote Connections Devices, I create a new device and call it M876-4. I assign a new secure password for the VPN connection with minimum 8 characters, special characters, numbers and upper and lower case letters. As type, I choose my built-in Scalens M876 mobile wireless router. Under Type of Connection, I select Digital Input. This means that the VPN connection is only established when required, for example, when the key switch on the control cabinet is activated. If the digital input on your router is not wired, please select the option Permanent. I recommend that you uncheck Device is a Network Gateway. In this case, you do not have to make any further settings for the devices accessed via the router. In my example, I want to limit the access to the switch Skylens XB208 and the wireless LAN access point Skylens W774. First, I create a subnet name, Cabinet. I enter the subnet IP and mask and select the one-to-one -one NAT mode. Then I add the two end devices with their IP addresses. In order to be able to access them later, I have to assign the end devices to the device group Devices. Now my router is set up. In the device overview, I can see a summary of the device information. 
I need this information to set up the router. Therefore, I leave the tab open. My router Skylens M876 is now set up in the server and I can start configuring the hardware. That means my router in the control cabinet. I connect directly to the device via LAN cable. I have already configured my network adapter to match the subnet. I open the default IP address of the Skylands M router in the browser 192.168.1.1. Many browsers display a message at this point that the connection is not secure. Nevertheless, you can still continue with the process step. The message disappears as soon as the device certificates are loaded in the browser. However, this is optional and has no effect on the functionality. Information about the settings can be found in the manual. When logging in for the first time, I use the username admin and password admin. Then I have to assign a new secure password. Now the basic wizard opens. Here I have to enter the IP address of the router that is intended for it in the control cabinet network. In my case it is the default address of the router. Optionally I can now assign a system name and further information. In the SIM tab I have to enter, if available, the PIN of the SIM card and activate the mobile network interface. In the next step, I sync my Skylands M router with the date and time of the PC. I recommend that you also enter an NTP server. A correct time setting for the clients and the server is very important, because the generated certificates are valid for a limited time. I don't need DIN DNS settings in my case. In the tab Cinema Remote Connect, I enter the address of the server. I use the server name cinemarcserver.dindns.arg. Alternatively, I can also enter a fixed externally accessible IP address for the server. If the port for the HTTPS access of the server was changed during the setup, it must also be adapted here. From the Cinema Remote Connect website, I now copy the fingerprint and the device ID. Now I enter the password that I have assigned to the device in the server. Finally, I activate the Cinema Remote Connect settings. In the last step, I can check them again. The warning light for the VPN connection is to be activated from the digital output of the router. Therefore, under System, Events, I activate VPN tunnel in the column Digital Out. Under Information, Cinema RC, I can check the status of the connection. The connection is pending because the key switch on the control cabinet has not yet been activated. In the last step, I have to create a remote maintenance user in the Cinema Remote Connect server. I create a new user under User Accounts. I call this user Service Technician. Further entries for the user are optional. In the tab Rights, I can assign additional rights to the Service Technician for the server. However, this is not necessary for remote maintenance. I add the service technician to the user group and create a secure password for him. This completes all the setup steps. The service technician can now access the router in the control cabinet as soon as the key switch is activated. Now I want to show you how the system works in reality. I connect to the internet and start the already installed Cinema Remote Connect client. I log in with the username, service technician and my password. In the mask I see the Skylands M router. I cannot access the entire subnet, but only the two Skylands devices that I have configured. However, the router is still offline. I now activate the key switch on the control cabinet to allow the remote maintenance connection. The router then establishes a VPN tunnel for the server. As soon as the tunnel is established, the warning lamp lights up. 
In the Cinema Remote Connect client, I see that the router is now online. To connect to this device, I select NAT Connection Mode and click on Establish VPN Tunnel. As soon as the tunnel is established, the display switches to Connect it. Now I can connect to the web-based management of the Skylens components and perform remote maintenance. As you can see, client setup is very simple. I have set up and created a Skylands M client and a service technician with the required access rights. Now the service technician can connect to the Skylands M router and perform remote maintenance. Siemens. Ingenuity for life.